end of our pre-oxygenation procedure and we are getting ready to intubate. The three people are in the room that are going to be taking part in the procedure. Uh, we have everything in the room that we should need. We have our appropriate drugs drawn up by our nurse and now we are getting ready to do the procedure. So why don't we give 20 milligrams of Atomidate. Okay, that's been given. And now we are going to give 100 milligrams of succinicolin. Okay, so now the key is we're going to wait until the patient is paralyzed. Okay, we can't be a little bit too uh, quick with the draw here because it's going to be important that there's not going to be any cough or aerosolized particle uh, contamination problems. Okay, so now I can see that the fasciculation has occurred. There's no more spontaneous breathing. Our saturations are fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. I'll put that to the side and I'm going to put this here. Okay, and we're going to get ready to intubate the patient. Nurse, could you please uh, shut off the nasal cannula oxygen for me? Yep. Now, the cuff is up. Very important Part, we will place the viral filter and end tidal CO2 and bag. Go ahead and bag the patient. Okay, if you want to take over the tube, I can take over bagging. There we go. Good? Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to make sure that the propofol or the continuing sed, uh, sedation is already in the room. The patient is still paralyzed. There's no spontaneous breathing where you're going to quickly transition the patient over to the ventilator. Okay, now the respiratory therapist has the ventilator going. Now we should be fine. Now there is no droplet. Uh, problems because we have a patient that is on a ventilator now they have a viral filter okay and you know we still have to take maximum precautions in in the way of PPE but at the same time all of us are a lot safer now that we don't have to worry about the droplets in the air so okay so an important question raised by respiratory therapy is whether or not to keep this um, viral filter on the endotracheal tube while the patient is on the ventilator? Uh, that's a good question. I have no idea whether this is gonna impede um, uh, the patient's inspiratory flow or not and uh, start setting off peak pressure alarms. That could be. Uh, I think for now, we're going to have to play it, uh, you know, and see how, how we do with it. If we're not setting off pressure alarms and the patient is getting adequate volume, then I, then I think that probably we should keep it as such. Um, if it is causing airway resistance, uh, as evidenced by ventilator alarms, then uh, I think probably the smartest thing to do in that situation is to paralyze the patient again with maybe a, a non-depolarizing agent like rock uranium. That way we don't have spontaneous breathing. We go ahead and remove this filter at that point and know that we already have a viral filter on the ventilator itself at that point. So. Uh, I think it's going to be questions that are going to have to be answered as we go. There's a lot of unanswered things and everything is changing from day to day. So um, that's just one little pitfall that I can see uh, coming up as a result of uh, this procedure. Um, anybody have anything else? Katie? No. Courtney? No. Okay. Thanks a lot.